So in the previous video, I showed you some of the basics of creating tables in a database. Um, when I put not null here on a column, that is one of many constraints, which I will show you throughout a series of videos here. Um, a constraint basically constrains your data. Go figure. Uh, so what is a constraint? Well, if you think of what a constraint really is in real life, it's it's some sort of restriction or or a way we we, we don't allow something or somebody to do something. Uh, for example, uh, I take my kids bowling, and um, I went up to the the register, and I said, well, I got my kids here, and can you put the bumpers up for the kids? And so they asked me what my kids' names were, and I gave them my kids' names. And so so basically, when my kids bowl the bowling ball down the alley, the bumpers come up and constrain the ball from going in the gutter. Now, there was another constraint that the bowling alley had. I asked them to put the bumpers up for everybody, including me, because my bowling skills aren't there. But they have a constraint that if you're going to have bumpers, you have to be of the age 12 or less. And for some reason, I couldn't convince them that I was 12 years old. It just didn't go over. But that's a constraint they had, had in their model. So we'd, we would enforce that with a check constraint. I'll show you later in another table. Anyway, so let me show you some other things we can do here to constrain our data. First of all, We've created this table cows, we have name and we have moo count. Notice though we have two Betsy's and then we have moo count uh, 10 and null. But we don't have any primary key. And so a primary key, if you remember, a primary key defines, uh, it's the column or group of columns in which we can uniquely identify every row. So we could say, well, the primary key is going to be name, but unfortunately, there's two Betsy's, and chances are, if I had a big farm, I might have two cows named Betsy. And so we could say, well, it'll be moo count. Moo count's looking kind of unique here, but unfortunately, uh, there is a good chance that two cows will probably moo the exact same number of times at some point on a big ranch. So moo count's not very good. Well, we could say, well, the combination of name and moo count would be the primary key. Well, that's better. Except there's probably going to be two Betsy's that moo, can, moo ten times, or two two cows with the same name that that eventually they're going to have the same moo count at some point. So that doesn't work. So so there's there's various things we could do in here, but but generally what I've seen more often than not is we say ID and we'll say it's an int. So now when we insert a cow, uh, insert into cows values. We have to give a specific um, ID value here. So this count could be 5, and name is Betsy, and moo count. Let's just start out at 0 because brand new cow. Okay? Well, and then let's select splat from cows. In fact, just to keep from scrolling too much, I'm going to put that on the same line. Okay. So now we have this ID. Well, the problem with that is I can, uh, uh oh, sorry. I can't. I just hit a bunch of hotkeys that didn't turn out for me. I'm gonna copy and paste this line. I can, I can do this action several times. So now I have uh, cows, three cows in particular, three Betsy's. Um, I could say this is Billy, and this is Bob. So now names are unique, but the IDs aren't. So I need a way to say, hey, this is the primary identifier on this table. This is the primary key, is what we call it. So notice to say ID. Int, and then I'm going to put the restriction here, primary key. So I run that. Notice, oh, we get an error now when we try to do these inserts. It says, violation of primary key. It's so violated. Constraint, and constraints have names too. They're objects. It just gave me a, a default constraint name. Cannot insert duplicate key into object dbo cows. Now if I go to object explorer, and I look at cows here, notice ID, we get this, this primary key symbol, meaning or the PK as well, that means primary key. This is a special column, the identifying column. Anyway, so I've seen IDs. We could also say maybe we'd have branding ID, and which would probably make more sense if we brand our cows with numbers or tag their ears with numbers. Then instead of just having some arbitrary ID in my database, I'd, I'd want to store the number that actually correlates with the actual cow instead of just some arbitrary unique number, just so I can have a unique row. Ideally, well, however you identify the primary key in your table, you're using something more intuitive than just ID. But I've used ID plenty. In many cases, you just have to come up with an ID to make it unique. But something to be 
wary of is if I say Betsy here, just because I have a primary key doesn't necessarily guarantee that the data is unique. Because, yeah, now the branding ID, 012, this is unique, and the database is happy, the primary keys. No duplicate values here. But then I've stored Betsy twice, and if this, if both of these rows represent the exact same cow, then I've still inserted duplicate data. So, so it's really up to, in the end, it's really up to us as humans to, to guarantee uniqueness uh, as far as our data goes. But, but that's primary key there. Um, let me just show you another way. If you do go just with the default in, you say primary key, then you can put out here identity and generally just say one one, which means for this column, take a default value, uh, start at one, and for every new record, add one. So I kind of showed this in a default or in a different video, but now that I'm saying, hey, count the column for me. I can't put these identity values in, or these primary key values in here, because the database will generate them for me now. So notice I said start at one, and so the first record gets a one, and then two, and then three, and then every record I insert it, insert into this table, uh, the database will just create a new ID for me. So that's nice, and it's quite common to use that trick as well. If you need something a little more unique, I don't know, say you want to start at 100, and you want to count by tens or 11s, yeah, let's count by 11. That might be more fun. Then here we go. We start at 100, and then every new record just goes up by, by 11. I, I've never had need for that. Usually I just have a 1 and a 1 here. But that's, that's primary keys and also how to generate their values.